Ending Abortion, Not Just Fighting It, by Father Frank A. Pavone, M.E.V. Introduction. This book is for all people who oppose abortion and who want to end it. Many people are pro-life privately, that is, in regard to their own participation in abortion. They would never do it, encourage it, or facilitate it. Most of us also have that attitude regarding violent crime and child abuse. Yet few, if any, would say that it suffices to personally oppose these acts. It is not enough to refrain from doing such things. We must create a society in which nobody feels free to do them. Yet we treat the victims of abortion differently than the victims of crime or child abuse. The latter have protection despite the fact that some devalue them. The former are deprived of protection because some devalue them. And while it is clear that in a sinful world, sins will always be committed, we never have permission to tolerate sin or injustice. We work to bring them to an end. That is why in this book, and in my pro-life activism since 1976, I have not tired of calling pro-life people to renew each day their goal to not simply reduce abortion or bear witness against abortion, but rather to end abortion. Woe to you if you do not succeed in defending life, the Holy Father declared at World Youth Day in Denver in 1993. Woe to us indeed. This war over abortion does not end in pro-life wins or pro-choice wins. If pro-life doesn't win, nobody wins. Abortion destroys everything it touches. For a government to permit abortion is to permit the disintegration of the state itself. No longer is such a nation the common home for all its people, but rather a tyrant state that disguises oppression in the language of rights. For a church to permit abortion is to betray the gospel and to render itself incapable of leading people to the healing forgiveness of Christ. For an individual to permit abortion, turning the other way, and failing to do his or her part to correct this injustice is to betray the very meaning of being human, to be a person for others, aware that God has entrusted us to each other, and that we find our fulfillment only when we give ourselves away for the good of the other person. The pages that follow contain my reflections on abortion and the pro-life movement from various angles. I have presented some of the key concepts to help readers focus on the fact that abortion is about people before it is about issues. The person of the baby, the person of the mom and dad, the person who performs the procedure, the person who witnesses all of this as a bystander, the person who tries to stop this injustice. These are the subjects of my reflections. Abortion affects us all, compels a response from us all, and ultimately provides a measuring line by which God will judge us all. The seriousness of my reflections on this tragedy are combined with the immense joy that comes from acknowledging that we are celebrating the victory of life. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and the entire kingdom of death has been robbed of its power. Every bit of our pro-life activity, therefore, needs to be immersed in the awareness of this victory. Indeed, we are not just working for victory, we are working from victory. It is my fervent prayer that these reflections will give readers the tools they need to reaffirm their own commitment to the pro-life cause as the pivotal human rights cause of our day, to articulate pro-life arguments convincingly and compassionately, and to carry out their role in the pro-life movement with the peace and joy that come only from God and that nobody can take away from them.